All right, luckily the camera lady arrived. I'm not coordinated enough to shoot video and talk at the same time, so she's gonna help me out and it'll be a little bit less boring and hopefully a better video for you guys. Hello, camera lady. Hello, I'm glad to be of help because you, you need it. <laughs> I need it, you're right. I need all the help I can get. Yes. All right, let's shoot some video. Okay, let's do it. Okay, recently I was tending the dredge for another, dr for another person and I got to thinking about what am I actually breathing? I read the paperwork that came with the dredge and the warnings of carbon monoxide and that sort of thing. Actually, I'm an industrial hygienist. I make a living doing this kind of thing, sampling air. So I'm wondering, what am I breathing? Because carbon monoxide, as I recall, is lighter than air. And also, the heated gas coming out of that exhaust pipe is lighter than air. So, I'm standing here watching the dredge. And this exhaust gas is blowing out with carbon monoxide and fumes. It's lighter than air. So I'm thinking, wait a minute, it's drifting up toward the breathing zone or the intake of the breathing zone of my snorkel. Also, the gas that's coming out of here, the carbon monoxide gas that's coming out of here is heated. Heated gas is a lot lighter than cool gas, which is gonna to tend to also make it migrate right up into the breathing zone at the inlet for my snorkel. So I've got to really thinking now, am I really breathing good, clean, dry, compressed air or not? So we're gonna explore this together. I have no idea what the results are gonna be. I'm gonna give you a disclaimer at the end because I don't want anybody getting sick or dying because of the video. But let's take a look and see what we have and find out if we are in fact breathing good, safe air. This is the four gas meter we're gonna be using today. It's just a gas alert. I'm gonna turn it on and let it scroll through and, and uh, make sure it's okay. Earlier, I calibrated it made sure that I calibrate it with my cow gas. I also bump tested it to make sure that the meter is reading as it's supposed to. We're only going to be concerned today primarily about the carbon monoxide levels. This thing is a four gas meter. It reads carbon monoxide, it meets oxygen level, it reads the LEL, lower explosive limit, and H2S hydrogen sulfide. It reads in parts per million, so we're going to get really small accurate testing uh, when we do this, all right. This is the last of the technical stuff. I know you're more concerned about just what the O2 levels are, I mean CO levels are. I'm gonna bump test this right quick. I've got my cow gas hooked up. Make sure this, the calibration is good and the instrument is gonna read correctly. So let me see if I can hook up the cow gas. And it should start alarming. That tells me that everything is correct, we're going to get good accurate readings, and it's going to alarm should we exceed the limitations set in the, in the four gas meter. Okay, so I'll buy a new dredge and it comes with a package. Part of the package is this. Warning, carbon monoxide gas. There's a disclaimer too. Further exposure to the gas causes a lack of coordination Weakness and nausea, the final effects of excessive exposure are convulsions, coma, and death. Now, that doesn't sound like anything I want to do. I don't want to die. Next page. The, air, the, air, the safety air snorkel does not eliminate carbon monoxide gas. That's their disclaimer. It doesn't eliminate it. It, has, it does aid in the reduction of fumes. I'm not sure how it aids in the reduction of fumes, unless there's a carbon filter behind this pre-filter right here. We'll look into it and see. All the safety precautions uh, must be observed. So I'm saying, okay, well, that's something to be concerned about, carbon monoxide. So I pulled the MSDS sheet, excuse me, the SDS sheet, we're globally harmonized now, for carbon monoxide and also for air. And I'm finding that carbon monoxide is actually, like I said earlier, the molar mass is actually less than a compressed air. It weighs less, therefore it's gonna try to tend to migrate into the zone of the breathing zone of that snorkel. However, it's almost exactly the same as air. Uh, molar mass of CO is 28.0, air average is 28.8, so there's not gonna be a lot of migration upward, although there will be some. But the heated effect will tend to migrate it toward the inlet of the snorkel. So I'm looking at the MSD, excuse me, SDS sheet for carbon monoxide, <coughs> and OSHA sets the pill at 50 parts per million the ACGIH, which is the American Conference of Industrial, uh, Governmental Industrial Hygienists, they tend to be a little bit more conservative in their, their uh, limitations. 
are saying that it's worth that as 25 parts per million is your action level. That's on an eight hour time weighted average TWA and that's the threshold limit value TLV. We'll talk about that more a little bit, a little bit longer, um, a little bit later. Also the IDLH for carbon monoxide which is immediately dangerous to life and health is 1200 parts per million. So we're going to be looking for 1200 parts per million, that's the IDLH which is immediate concern and we're going to see what the values are coming through that regulator hose into our, that we're, into our breathing zone, what we're breathing, and find out if it's 25 parts per million time weighted average or the TLV or less. I didn't see STEL. I went ahead and looked at another MSDS sheet looking for a short term exposure limit. There's no, no limits for that that I can find. So let's go play with the dredge and see what, what, what we find. Let's go have some fun. I'm not floating the dredge in the water so I don't want to burn up my seal. I've just run a garden hose straight to my intake, pull the foot valve off, and hopefully since this is a ceramic seal, if I can keep it cool, I won't burn that, won't burn that seal up during this testing. Okay, I just primed the pump on the dredge. Hopefully there's enough water from this garden hose uh, that, that, that it'll keep up. I'm not sure that it will or not. I've got my four gas meter turned on right now. We're reading zero on carbon monoxide. What I'm going to do, and I'm not going to be mic so I'm going to have to yell loudly. Uh, we're using the mini cam today. I'll yell loudly over the noise. Hopefully you can hear me okay. I'm going to take readings in different areas around the dredge, around the exhaust, around the snorkel, and see if we get any kind of readings. So let's crank this thing up and see what happens. Okay, we're at the inlet, so inlet of the snorkel right here. This is our breathing zone of the snorkel. My meter is reading zero percent, no, no carbon monoxide, zero parts per million. The air here is clean. I'm going to go down below now and see what kind of reading I get. All right, at the bottom end of the snorkel, right here at the intake of the air compressor, I'm still reading. toward the exhaust. It immediately starts alarming. We're way over, way out of limits on that. It immediately starts alarming. You having fun yet? All right, we had zero parts per million at the in, inlet of the snorkel, right at the top. Down at the bottom of the snorkel where it meets the compressor, we had zero parts per million of carbon monoxide. And then when I swung it around toward the exhaust, it immediately alarmed and went off. I saw it shoot up over 200 parts per million immediately. It alarmed, so the meter is reading correctly. Now what we're gonna do is check at our regulator and see what we're breathing on this end, if, if anything. The indications to me are, at this point, if we're reading zero parts per million up here at the inlet, the snorkel, we're probably good at the regulator itself. Let's go see what we got. Okay, I have the four gas meter in a Ziploc bag. All readings are zero, 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 and 20.9 as I expected they would be. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the regulator inside the bag, and I'm going to purge it, filling this bag full of air and see if we get a CO reading on this end. I'm going to purge it first out here. All right, now we'll stuff it in the bag. I'm going to seal the bag, just leave enough air, enough room for the air to get out and then we're gonna watch our meter while I purge it. All right, we're at zero parts per million on the carbon monoxide. I'm gonna start purging. Bag's filling up like a balloon. No change in the oxygen level, no change in the carbon monoxide level. I'm going to continue purging. All right.
right camera leg. If you'll zoom, get kind of close down here, let's see if we can read the meter. Top right hand side, carbon monoxide, zero parts per million. So based on my testing, it looks like the air that you're breathing on the regulator, at least in these particular conditions, is safe to breathe. Still reading zero parts per million. That's good breathing gas. Good breathing gas. Okay, the last sampling we're going to do is just see what the, the dredge tender is breathing. So if I'm at the end of the dredge right here, as I often am collecting tailings or sampling the tailings, we'll get a reading right here, and then occasionally I'm off to the side in this area, and maybe it'll be lifting up the mat, moving a rock or whatever or just sitting here watching the dredge and the riffle action and seeing what it's doing. So we'll grab a sample right about here. We'll grab a sample at the back and let's see what the tender is breathing. Okay, we're away from the dredge right now. We have the four gas meter ready to go. As you can see, the carbon monoxide level is zero parts per million. I'm gonna walk over now and see what kind of readings we get as if I'm the dredge tender. Get to check at the end of the dredge first of all. It alarmed right off. We had 39 parts per million. I just walked away and we dropped back down to zero. I'm gonna get right back to the edge of the dredge. again. So the guy tending the dredge down on this end is actually breathing fairly high concentration of CO. Try right, one more time. We're sitting at zero. Nine, twelve, eighteen, twenty-eight, twenty-nine. 37, 53, 53. I'm gonna walk away and clear it back to zero. So you can see the, the tender on the edge right there, especially sampling on the edge. You're standing there for any length of time. He's breathing a fairly high level of carbon monoxide. All right, we're at zero again right now. So I'm gonna go off to the side, actually closer to the exhaust, and I'm sure it's gonna be even a higher level there. Check it out. All right, I got over 195 parts per million just standing off to the side. It's a little bit higher than I expected. You guys tending the dredge, you're probably getting more carbon monoxide exposure, or without a doubt, than the guy breathing on the regulator end. Let's try it one more time from the side. We're back at zero. I'm going to walk over to the dredge, raise the mat or whatever I'm going to do, move a rock, let's see what we get. All right, you guys tending the dredge, you're the ones, you're the ones actually getting the hit on the CO. 
Uh, I think at one point it ran up to 199 parts per million just on the edge. Um, either side I'm picking up carbon monoxide at levels above the action level. So if you're back here tending the dredge, check your riffle action, collect your sample, then get out of the way. Because I don't think you want to stand there for any long length of time breathing those, breathing those CO fume, <laughs> carbon monoxide fumes. All right, zero on the end, high readings, toward the middle, either side, high readings. Okay, anytime I do any kind of environmental testing, air sampling, or whatever it is, I always put a, a disclaimer at the end of the report. My disclaimer for this is, these are the results that I got at the time of the testing. There's a lot of variables that I didn't consider. I didn't consider changes in ambient air temperature, uh, the effects of the speed of the motor, um, the size of the motor, current, air currents in the area, wind, blow, wind speed, wind direction. There's a lot of variables I didn't take into consideration. But this is kind of like a typical day being out on the river, out on the creek, dredging, typical temperature that you would expect. And as I, at least for my testing that I see right now, the air coming into the snorkel, going through the compressor and into your breathing regulator, is clean. It's zero parts per million carbon monoxide. The um, TWA eight hour average, I think, for uh, carbon monoxide is 20 to 25 percent, depending on whether you're looking at uh, Industrial Hygiene Association or the OSHA regulations. 25 percent. So as long as you're below that action level, you're probably okay. My disclaimer also is I can't attest to your sensitivities or your hypersensitivities to carbon monoxide. I may be able to read 10, 20 parts per million all day and have no effects. And you may be hypersensitive to it and at two parts per million you may get sick, nauseated or whatever. So this is just basically something I was concerned about, something that I wondered about for a long time. Thought we'd just shoot the video and see what you guys, uh, see what we found. I hope this information is something that at least make you think about what you're doing. And if you have any questions, please just post them. Post them on the comment section and thank you guys for watching. We really appreciate you watching our videos. We do this for you. Thanks a lot. Have fun, go dredging, get some gold. Okay, I'm getting ready to start a new video series. It's called 67 Nova. I'm going to put it, actually I'm going to put it on this channel. I thought about putting it on another channel, but I'm going to put it on the Indie Me Too channel. You guys, that's gold and treasure guys. Don't get your panties in a wad. I'm still going to do Golden Treasure videos, but this is something I've wanted to do. It's going to be based around a 67 Nova that we're going to turn into a really hot street machine, but it's going to be much more than that. It'll be classic cars, you're interested in classic cars, muscle cars, NASCAR one is good back in the old days, drag racing, that sort of thing. We've got a lot of good uh, interviews, some documentaries um, that we're shooting right now, and of course we're going to convert this little mom and pop. 67 Nova two door 283 power glide slip and slide power glide into a hot little muscle car so hope you'll join us for that series too if you're not interested in muscle cars when you see 67 Nova come up just you know you don't have to watch it but I would appreciate it if you do and hope you'll join us thanks a lot